but this is nonsense. I mean, why should the world be a simulation? I would just ask what are the right questions to ask. We make a mistake when we try to make nothing into something. Hello, I'm Carlo Rovelli. I'm here at Penguin to answer some big questions. Are we living in a simulation? No, we are not. <laughs> Humans are funny because when they discover something, they immediately get so excited that they think the entire universe is like that. In the sort of 18, 1900, uh, people discovered, uh, started to be very good in building machines. So they say, oh, we got it. The universe is a machine. When much before people started writing, said, oh, we got it. People, the world is a book. Everything is a book. And recently, we have made video games. So we say, oh yeah, we got it. <laughs> the world is a video game. But this is nonsense. I mean, why should the world be a simulation? I mean, there's just no ground for anything like that. The world is a world. The hard point about science is not really to answer questions. So maybe it has taken months, years, sometimes decades, even centuries. But uh, if you think about it, all the good questions, pose, uh, scientific questions, were all answered. The problem is that we always get the wrong questions. Uh, suppose Heisenberg, who invented quantum mechanics, before he invented quantum mechanics, came to me and asked the question. He would ask, what is the force um, that drives the electrons along the atoms, along these strange, peculiar jumps and orbits? Uh, it's a wrong question. There's just no force. That's not the point, okay? Uh, it's something else. So I would not ask a question. I would just ask what are the right questions to ask. What am I assuming which is wrong? I'm sure that in my assumptions there is something wrong. Like there were wrong assumptions in, 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 in Kepler, in Heisenberg, in Copernicus, in Aristotle. Please tell me where I'm going wrong. And, and everything is magic about black holes. I mean, you take a clock near a black hole and, and, and it stops and it comes out uh, later and no time passes near the black hole. You, you enter and you, you don't exit, you don't know where, where you go after. And, and these incredible objects were actually understood before seeing them. So I studied them at school, in my university years, in books that were saying, well, it's a funny predictions of the theory, but you know, too strange to exist for real. No, they're out there for real. On the one hand, we know so much about them and uh, they, they're perfectly described by the theory we have, but still we don't know basic things about them. We Things fall inside and we have no idea where it goes. We see things falling in and you ask, well, imagine you fell in, what will happen a second later? We don't know. So it's, uh, it's uh, the most clean example of our ignorance. About, uh, about the universe. Uh, they're, they're marvelous. They are the best thing around. God, it's a concept, an idea, which is played very differently by different people. So it's an extremely flexible idea. Uh, you know, it's got father, it's got absolute, has a bear, it's spiritual, it's nothing at all, it's, uh, it's many gods, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just a feeling, it's just a, a creator, it's all sorts of versions of it. In fact, people use the expression God to denote completely different things uh, from one another. So it's very adaptable, and I think you can adapt it to everything, including to a scientific worldview. There are two dominant theories about the Big Bang. One is that uh, uh, time has just a finite extension in, 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 in the past, uh, and that's just the name we give to, to the end of it. And the other is that, uh, which for the moment seems more likely, is that uh, uh, there was in fact something the other side of the Big Bang. It was a contracting universe that bounced uh, into an expanding universe. And the number of calculations in um, quantum gravity seemed to indicate that that was the case. Which, of course, is not a, a, an answer to the question how the universe started. It's just an answer to the question what happened 14 billion years ago. Because if there was a contracting phase, we're just pushing the, the question of how things started uh, more in the past. So today we don't have a, a general answer 
about the beginning of time. There was there is a possibility that 14 billion years ago was the beginning of time, like Stephen Hawking talked, uh, but we're not sure. What's the other side of the universe? Just there's no other side of the universe. We make a mistake when we try to make nothing into something. We're trying to say uh, the, the unqualified nothing is black, it's uh, empty, but there's no unqualified nothing. This house has four rooms. What about the fifth rooms? Is it black? Is it empty? No, it's just not there. We cannot figure out the nothing anymore that we cannot figure out uh, another word, like the. Can we figure out the? No, it's the boy, the girl, the house. We humans um, always try to extrapolate our experience. So uh, we look around us and we see how things are and we think that things should be the same uh, all over. We try to continue. So we use our concepts that are formed in our environment and we try to project them outside and we make a mistake because uh, to understand how the world works uh, outside our little garden we have to change our concept, we have to be elastic, to think in a different manners. And that's why uh, we get entangled in, uh, in, in, in fake problems, because we are rigid in our concepts. Have you ever been in love? I mean, your eyes be become bigger, your heart starts b b beating fast, you're, you're all excited, you feel all over, it's just totally visible. It's a completely physical thing to love, both to love a woman or a man or, or something or an idea. When people get excited about an idea, things happen in their body, in their mind. This is all physical manifestation of love. But it's more, more than that. Love, which is probably the strongest uh, power that acts on that, is nothing else than these physical manifestations. That's the name we give to this excitement that happens in our body and mind and brain for a person, an idea, or a god, or justice, or a revolution. Do we have souls? Of course we have souls, right? I mean, soul is, is, is the name we give to the part of, of, of an entity we interact with, uh, which we, 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 we don't control. We, we know there is much more going on. A human being has a soul, uh, a cat has a soul, a forest has a soul, a book has a soul, a song has a soul. It's uh, whatever has an emotional impact on me and uh, also to give a name to the complexity of what is happening there, which I don't deal in, 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 in the details. So I think you have a soul because uh, you're a very complex reality. I of course don't know, the, nor do, do you, the, the infinite complexity of what happens in your body and your brain, uh, all these processes. So I want a name for all these processes, uh, which is not just your flesh, there's more, it's your soul. Oh, I'm in the way.